Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. As you can tell from the title, this is going to be a travel vlog. So I went to Portugal and this is me from the future because I am back home now. But because this vlog is more of a collection of clips, I wanted to add a story time, um, which would give some context to like what was going on at the time that I was filming this vlog. So I want to start off with a story time of us, you know, going to the airport, getting there and everything. And then a story time of what went down on night two. So I'm going to start off this vlog. And if you want to see what I got up to in Portugal, then keep on watching. Okay, so starting off, me and my sister, we had a flight on a Friday and I think it was at about 1 p.m. So we wanted to make sure that we got to the airport by 11 o'clock because we wanted to get there two hours ahead of time. And I have TSA pre and clear and she has clear. So we weren't really worried about security lines. But then like the night before our flight, we started getting these emails about some kind of system-wide shutdown or there was an issue with the airlines. So I know that United was having a problem and Delta, the airline that we flew to Portugal on, was also having a problem. So this was like going on in the background as we were like getting our stuff together, getting ready to go. And then the day of, we're still seeing, you know, information, your flight may be delayed, your flight may be canceled just due to the system-wide outage that was going on. And, you know, because of that, so we made sure we got to the airport two hours ahead of time. So we show up to the airport and the line is crazy. Like this is maybe the longest I've ever seen a line. And this was a line to get service so you could get your bag tags, print your boarding pass, all of that. So normally what I do is I always prepay, I always prepay for my bags before I go to the airport so that I can go to the kiosk and just print out the bag tags. However, no one could do that, even though I did prepay for my bags because the kiosks were down. So the kiosks were down, which meant that everyone had to wait in line to actually get their bag tags, um, which takes so much longer. And then also because the kiosks were down, maybe due to the system outage, the computers were also extremely slow and most of their computers were not working. So we have a ton of people, maybe two computers and the kiosks are not working, internet is slow, everything's bad. So we get there, we're in line, the line is so long and we think like, we're gonna be in this line two hours from now. Like our flight is fully going to be taking off and we're still going to be in this line with our bags not even checked in. So because it's my sister and I there, I have my sister wait in line with our bags and everything. And then I go talk to the employees at the airport. And I just told one lady, I was like, you know, just please be real with me. Like, do you think we're gonna make this flight? It takes off in two hours. This line is crazy and it's not moving. And she says, you know, I do see some people in line that I saw in line two hours ago, so it's hit or miss, but I recommend that you lurk and try to find a working kiosk because that's your best bet. So that's all I needed to hear. Once she said that, I was like, basically our only option is to find a kiosk that works. And again, we were told that none of them were working at the time. So I kind of lurked around with my sister in line and I did manage to find one single kiosk that was working. And I saw there was like a little tiny line by it. Like a lot of people hadn't noticed it yet. There was maybe three people in front of me. So I get in line because I'm like, okay, we need this kiosk. And as I'm in line, the, the line for that kiosk literally grows so much. And now there's like 10, 12 people in line. But so everyone goes, I'm noticing that you know, one person will go and they'll get their bag tag. So I'm like, okay, great, it's working. And then finally gets to me, I'm able to print my bag tags, but then my sisters don't print, which is like, it, that doesn't help. It doesn't help with only my bag tags printed because we needed to both check our bags to get on this flight. And I wasn't gonna leave her at the airport. So basically I get my tags printed, my bag's ready to go. And I tell the lady, there's like, I found like, I found someone who works there and I'm like, look, my bag tags printed, hers will not print. We need to get on this flight. Like, what can we do? So she just told me to get in line in the bag drop line, which was much shorter again, because most people couldn't get their bag tags. So my sister had gotten in line with me at the bag drop line. And basically she was able to kind of finagle her way in and we were able to get both of our bags checked. And I was actually shocked because the lady was like, you know, cross your fingers that your bag actually makes it on the flight because 
We checked our bags, you know, 45 minutes before the flight was to take off. And this was an international flight. Um, so we were dealing with all of that. Everything was crazy. And luckily, by a pure stroke of luck, we were able to get our bags in and on the flight and our bags were not left behind. We didn't have any issues, but that's what we were dealing with leading up to this trip. So us even making it to Portugal was a miracle because at one point we were like, there's no way we're going to make it. So that's story time just to preface this vlog and now we can cue the clips from Portugal. Somehow we ended up on a boat. <laughs> Hey vlog, we're here in Lisbon and this is our official first full day. We got in yesterday at like, <laughs> we got in yesterday at like 11 and we did a lot yesterday. We walked around. What else did we do? We went to dinner, we got on a boat taxi, but then we're going to head and do a little bit of shopping, run some errands, and we'll take you guys along. <laughs> come with us. Oh, really? So Enemies. They're war. Huh? Enemies. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Здравствуйте. <laughs> I guess I, before it was me from the future, me from present, I don't know, I'm confused. But, so now we are here for the second story time of this video. So I have to tell you guys what happened on night two. So when we get to Portugal, we love the Airbnb, it's really nice. It is small and the layout is super weird, but it's clean and it's in a good location, so we love that. But basically how the Airbnb is, when you walk, first when you get there, you have to walk up a ton of steps and then you get to the apartment and then when you open the front door, you're in the bedroom. And it's just a one bedroom apartment that we rented. And we were staying there for five days. Again, the story is related to night two, but you're in the apartment, you open the front door, there's a bedroom, and then there's another door that leads out of the, out of the bedroom that takes you to the kitchen and the bathroom. So you have to go through that door first, and then you can either go into the kitchen or go to the bathroom. So that's kind of the layout of the apartment. Um, so everything kind of leads through the bedroom when you first come in. So we had had some issues. Like one night, something weird had happened where I was in the bathroom, but my sister had actually closed the door that leads to the kitchen in the bathroom. And then I guess she was trying to come into the kitchen, but she was saying that she was turning the handle and it wasn't working, but luckily I was on the other side. So I just opened it for her. And we were just like, oh, that's weird. We didn't think much of it. Then now we're at night two. So I had already went in, I took a shower, got ready for bed. At this point, it's like 11 o'clock. My sister comes back um, because she was at my dad's Airbnb because he was also staying in Portugal. So she came back, she took a shower and right after she took a shower, she closed the bathroom door or really the door that leads to the kitchen and the bathroom. So when she closed that door, she went to go out, you know, to go to the bathroom and we're realizing that we are trapped. Like she's turning the handle, and I'll insert video because I took a clip, but she's turning the handle and the door is not opening at all. No one locked anything, the door doesn't even have a lock, but you turn the door and nothing happens. Like the handle will move, you know, we see it going, but nothing is happening to open that door. So now we're kind of in panic mode because we just realized that we're now locked into the bedroom of our airbnb like of course we can go outside we can leave but we can't get to the kitchen or the bathroom and like i said it's like 11 11 30 at this point 
it's also Sunday and a lot of things in Portugal are closed on Sundays. So it's late at night, it's Sunday when things are already closed for the most part. And we're realizing that we now no longer have access to a bathroom or a kitchen in our Airbnb. So of course I email or I message the guy. I'm like, hey, we don't have access to the Airbnb. Again, like I said, it's 11 p.m. at this point. He says, okay, I'll come tomorrow. And I have to say, like, I understand that, you know, it was late and he's not gonna be ready, like up and ready to run. But considering that the issue was due to the apartment having a loose door handle, which has nothing to do with us. And also considering that like, I'm telling you, we can't go to the bathroom. Like, I feel like there needed to be some urgency there. Like, hey, I'll, I'm on the way or I'll send someone immediately, send a screwdriver or whatever. Cause we couldn't even, like he had even told me that I could take the handle off the door if I unscrew it. But I don't know about you, I don't travel with a toolkit. So I didn't have a screwdriver. And like I said, because it was Sunday, 11 p.m., I couldn't get one either. So basically, you know, I'll skip ahead in the story because at one point we had tried to find a public restroom. So we're out walking at this point, it's 1 a.m. We're trying to find a public restroom. We don't know what's going on with maps because maps is saying it's right there. We don't see it. And then we, as we're walking back, because we had left to find a public restroom, we're walking back to the Airbnb in defeat. We run into a situation where the fire department was called, not anything related to us, but we had just seen the fire department pull up and some police cars. So we're like, okay, we're desperate at this point. Maybe they have a screwdriver. Like what fire engine doesn't have tools, you know? So I asked them and when I go up to ask them, like they make it clear they don't speak English, but lucky for me, I know a little bit of Spanish. I'm not the best Spanish speaker, but I can definitely understand. So I tried in my broken Spanish to explain the situation. Um, and it took a couple tries, but we ended up getting them to come with us to try to help us. Um, we got like two of the firefighter guys, even though like they had me explaining to the police and then to the firefighters again and to the police. And it was just a, a little bit confusing to be honest. And then we're walking to the Airbnb cause it was like about two minute, a two minute walk from where we ran into them. And the firefighter, I was so confused because he had just finished telling me that, you know, he didn't speak English at all, which is why he was, which is why I was explaining what was going on in Spanish. But then he spoke to me in English and said, you're gonna have to pay the police 50 euros for their troubles. I'm like, and I'm like, pay the police, but you guys are firefighters and you're the ones helping us, right? Like the police are not involved at all in this. And then he's like, yeah, but, you know, since I know what's going on, you're gonna have to pay them for their troubles. So basically he didn't, he said he didn't speak English, but he knew enough to tell me that I now have to bribe the police 50 euros in order for them to help. And he made it clear that he said, if we don't pay the police, they're not gonna open, the firefighters are not going to open the door for us. And he said, oh, the money's not for me, it's for the police, whatever, who cares? So basically he wanted me to bribe the police. That's, that's what I was hearing. Um, we get to, but whatever, at this point we're desperate. I'm like, look, if 50 euros is what it's gonna take, that's just what it's gonna be. So they get back to our Airbnb and then they look upset. And I realized that they were upset because they didn't understand the situation, probably in part due to me explaining in broken Spanish. But what had happened was they, since it's an Airbnb, we don't own the place. They can't just go unlocking doors and taking handles off the hinges, which I understand. But at the same time, one, I'm pretty sure I said that before we like went all the way to the Airbnb. And two, like our options are very much limited. So at this point, the fire department has basically said they won't help us. So they leave, it's like 2 a.m. And this story ends with us having to pee in our hydro flask water bottles because we had no access to a bathroom for over 12 hours. And then we had to throw those away and order new ones when we got back to the US. So just to make it clear, after we use that water, after we use the hydro flask as a bathroom, we were done with them. They were thrown out immediately. But I will say that this did put a damper on the trip, low key. And I did mention, you know, wanting a refund and they low key ghosted me when I said that. So I still don't know to this day if we're going to get a refund just for that night. Cause I think, you know, some compensation is owed given that we, you know, I had to pee in my water bottle, like for real. Um, and hydroflasks are not cheap. So 
I just wanted to throw that in there for the vlog. This was going on again behind the scenes night two. That's so cool. We have brought the concept of takeout to Portugal. So yesterday we ate at this restaurant and it was a nice restaurant and the food was so, so good. So we, and they don't really do takeout in Portugal like at all. So we had asked her like, hey, if we call and like try to take this to go tomorrow, can we do it? And she was like, yeah, yeah, sure. So we called today and you know, there was a little bit of confusion at first, but we made it through. I think, you know, they love the experience, but as folks from the US, we like to eat in our pajamas at home. So that's what we're doing right now. I got the chicken satay and an apple crumble. And then my sister got this soup and also an apple crumble. So now we're about to eat this. And this is our last meal in Portugal. I hope you guys enjoyed this Portugal vlog. More travel vlogs on the way. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in my next video.